What's up everyone and welcome to my guitar video, hello. The video series where I take one of my personal- Oh, hello, here's a dog, hey! Hey, cutie, what are you doing? What, hey? The video series where I take one of my personal guitars and I make a video about how it is and the setup and whatnot and just talk a little bit about it. Okay, this is a very temporary solution of a setup table right here. Since we moved office, I haven't had a chance to make a proper like setup desk. So uh, this has to do right now. It has to be at the dining table, but that works. It, it really works. And here's the dog. Good littles. Uh, wait, do you want to come up here? But I'm I'm right in the middle of shooting a video right now. You can't come up in my lap, but it. And today I'm extremely excited to show you a guitar I haven't shown you guys before. And uh, this is something I bought earlier this year uh, from a reverb auction. This is an ESP M2 guitar, standard series. Now these have a fair bit of awesome history to it, I must say. The ESP M2s have some sort of an awesome history to it where and a bunch of uh, awesome players play this guitar like, you know, Kirk Hammond played for a long time, Jeff Hanneman, uh, Tim Otolke of Stradivarius and uh, Michael Romeo also played these guitars back in the day and that stupid f***ing slider can suck my balls, seriously. Why don't you just keep sliding, little son of a bitch? There you go. Now you're sliding really good. When are you gonna stop and f*** off? Is it because it's not straight, maybe? I have to fix that. Okay. Okay, I have no idea what I'm doing. Let's just go back and f*** that slider forever. That's what I get for trying to make my videos a little bit more, you know, good looking and uh, alive. I have a slider that doesn't work. How about that? All the M2 ESP guitars were made in Japan up until the point where my slider decided to f*** up and ruin this whole mood of my video right here to the point where I got f***ing pissed off. At a stupid f***ing slider. Well, stay there then. Asshole. Up until like the end 2000s, they made these in a couple different variations with rosewood fretboards and maple fretboards uh, with uh, Seymour Duncan JB pickups in the bridge and a, a 59 in the neck or two EMG 81s like on this one right here. It has two EMG 81s. But most of them had Floyds too. So they were called ESP M2s up to the point where ESP uh, took a decision that they would rebrand uh, every part of their production. So now they're called E2 M2. I understand why ESP took this decision, but I thought it was a stupid decision. Now everything that comes out of Japan, which was, you know, the initial and ESP guitars right there, the kick-ass guitars from, you know, the mid-90s, the M2s. They were all made in Japan, uh, called ESP M2s. Nothing weird about that. Super awesome. Now they're called E2 when they're made in Japan, and they're called ESP when they're made in the US. I think this is a very stupid uh, decision that they made, but, I mean, I'm not ESP. And uh, so these are one of the last ESP M2s. And, these, uh, and this particular one was made in 2007. I think they stopped in 2008. Or I don't remember exactly, but at least this is a ESP M2 right there. Look at that. So obviously this has a maple fretboard, the EMG 81 pickups. It has a Floyd Bros bridge right there. I'm not even sure what this is tuned to. Let's make a little slide. Take a look. Look at the dog. That's a very graceful way of laying down and drinking water, I must say. So right now, you can see this bridge is a little bit recessed. Uh, I think they... When I got the guitar, it came blocked with one of these Hoskos like this. Which is the proper way of sending a f***ing Floyd Rose guitar, by the way. You block the bridge somehow. So, they detuned the guitar for the purpose of sending it. And let's uh, tune it up to something. To what? I have no idea. Okay, let's check how close I am to the low E. I only check the high E using the, uh, the tuner. And then I tune the rest of the things with the, you know, by just uh, referencing the high E. Let's see how close I were. Low, low E. Okay, not that close. Right now I'm over tightening the, the tuning just to lift up the bridge to its uh, natural position where it's completely flat against the surface. Hello slider. I hate you. 
All right, good to go. Where's my little tightener of a tightening tool? I had a bunch of friends that owned a couple of these M2s back during the 90s and I remember them being just like the Ibanez RG, uh, RG series, like an RG uh, 550, they were just really solid guitars and for a good price too back then. Now they're really expensive, obviously, so... And that neck, man, is so flat. Let's take a look at the battery compartment real quick, I just want to check what's underneath there. Battery! Battery! Is that a song? Should be a song, if it's not. The reason why I bought this guitar was actually to make a Metallica tone video. So that's coming in a while. Okay, let's check the potency of this battery. Not that good, actually. I have to switch that out. Oh shit, oh shit, I'm... I'm on my second to last battery here from Chell and Company. Oh, I put it on the floor, great. Ah, that's a potent battery. <laughs> the more you lick, the better. That's what I heard. I think we're pretty much ready to go. Look at that bridge. That bridge is nice and flat. Look at that. That's a flat bridge right there. It says made in Nippon. On the back, that means that it's made in Japan. Okay, I'm ready to fire this thing up. I'm looking forward to it. Holy shit face. Let's go. Okay, so now I'm back in my room. I brought out the PV5150 and this angle oversized cabinet. Here's the guitar right there. M2, are you ready for this? <laughs> So, since these are active pickups, they give a little bit of an extra push for the 5150. I'm using the normal gain right now. Let's go to do the high gain, see what's up. Tight. Gnarly. Okay. I'm really having a problem right now. The pickup rings. I kind of hit them. A little bit at least. It's really snappy. I mean, you can say whatever you want about tone woods, but maple board. At least acoustically, it snaps uh, a lot better. You know, I have a, a slight suspicion that these EMGs that are in here are probably not the ones that are made in, uh, in the US. The absolute first EMG8 ones were made in the US, they sound absolutely incredible. The new ones, they just don't sound the same in my opinion. I have an old one in uh, a guitar over there and it just sounds a lot better. Let's see if I can bring that out and just for comparison, okay? All right, so this guitar is in a completely different tuning, but I just want to demonstrate. Isn't it funny? This guitar has been up on my wall. I haven't, you know, we moved and all. I haven't played it since, you know, forever. And I pick it up and it's in f***ing tune because of the ever tune. Yes, that's an example of a really good sounding EMG81 uh, sounding EMG 
It's a USA version in, the, in this one, an old one Oh shit. That's a long ass flutter right there. Shit, man, that's so cool. <laughs> okay. So there you go, that's the ESP M2 guitar right there, made in Nippon, Japan before they started doing the E2, LTD and ESP bullshit. Thank you so much for watching this video, hope you enjoyed it, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, okay? Thank you for watching, goodbye.